Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 and I have another video. Uh, this will be a combined repair slash teardown tube. I've realized I've never torn down like the, either my original PSP or PSP2000. I've done the Go uh, in one of my past videos, but uh, so here I got for really cheap actually. Um, it's I'm surprised, it's almost in mint condition. Um, the seller noted that it doesn't turn on like at all. Um, and I just plugged it in, uh, even though there's no battery included, obviously. But I plugged it in with the cord, and I, I have other, uh, I have another PSP 2000 and a 1000. And if you plug it into 5 volts using the AC adapter, even without a battery, it should turn on. And in this case, the green power light does come on, uh, but nothing happens on the screen. So we're going to do an uh, opening of it. And the best thing is it came with a free uh, memory card. Usually the sellers will take out the memory cards and the batteries uh, when they sell these. And this is in immaculate shape. I'm surprised. Uh, everything feels very nice. Um, even, you know, the inside is nice and clean. So whoever had this before took very good care of it. So I'm wondering why exactly it's dead. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're going to open this up. And the first thing that I did as soon as I got it was I... I took off the battery cover uh, to check inside here, and no one actually has opened this. This is a brand, uh, you know, not brand new, but um, never been opened before PSP. Usually, all the ones that I get will usually have the uh, water sensor inside tripped and, you know, someone's torn, or uh, you can see that they pried up the warranty void label. So this has never been opened before, so this might actually have a pretty good chance of being repairable. Uh, so let me get all this stuff out of the way and uh, I want to put down something soft I'll just use my mouse pad so I don't scratch the screen up um, so to open this guy uh, what we are going to need is a uh, Phillips a small Phillips screwdriver and it's fairly simple um, so there are two screws along the left side here uh, let me autofocus thank you Two screws along the side here, as well as uh, one here and one underneath the, the warranty void label. So let's get the three that are visible already out. These screws are pretty small, so you want to be careful not to strip them, because I actually have done that in the past. I'm surprised I don't, as far as I just checked quickly now, I haven't done a, a teardown video of the these older PSPs, which fascinates me because I've done a uh, a shell replacement for 2000 before but I don't I guess I never made a video on it <laughs> oddly enough anyway um, yeah so these two screws are the same length I believe one of these or both of these on on under the battery compartment are different lengths so you might want to keep them separate uh, let's see okay so this top screw and these two are the exact same length so that's not an issue so next, I'm going to pry up this label, so I'm the first one to have done this. Uh, don't want to muck it up too bad, because I mean it is very nice. There we go. Came up without too much trouble. I'll just put that off to the side. Yeah, what I started doing is uh, taking neodymium magnets and putting them on all, all my screwdrivers so that it, it'll prevent, you know, keep the screws sticking to the, um, the actual screwdriver when I take them out so less likely to lose them. And it's actually been really helpful doing that. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, all the screws are the same length so far, so... That's perfect. I'd forgotten whether they were or not. It's been a while since I've taken apart a PSP, actually. Okay, so we have all those screws out. Um, so we should just be able to kind of start prying. Uh, the front face plate is what will come off first. And, oh yeah, there's one more screw at the bottom. I always forget. This one's a little bit stubborn. Don't want to strip it. And this is the same length as the others as well. Okay, two more screws at the top also, next to the USB port. 
I'm almost uh, wondering what the problem is then. If it's just a simple, maybe someone, I mean, obviously the person who, who had this previously had some sort of case and they took care of it. Okay, so the two screws at the USB are actually smaller than all the other screws. So I'm gonna keep those separate. But yeah, I'm wondering if they dropped it or something and maybe dislodged the cable because it was never open before. So it's not like someone um, you know, didn't put all the cables inside uh, correctly. So I'm wondering really what exactly is the issue. Hopefully it's not something power related. Um, so yeah, this will just kind of start coming apart. There's a single catch here, like a clip. So you want to be careful when opening it uh, that you don't break that clip. Because it won't go back together quite the same way. go. You want to kind of tilt it out towards that portion. You kind of wiggle it a little bit helps. Get your fingernail in there. And yeah, you can see the clip right here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, why, why is that coming along for the ride? Huh. Okay, well, <laughs> that's interesting. Anyway, so yeah. Oh, I already got dust on the screen. Anyway, here's the screen itself. Uh, you have your, your buttons on a separate ribbon connector. Um, you have your, your circle pad or whatever, the slider pad. Um, and then your membranes for the D-pad and then the face buttons. Um, your shoulder buttons have separate screws to keep them in. Hopefully I won't need to take everything apart. But the screen actually will, um, it's clipped in slightly on the sides here. Hopefully we can lift it out. Let's see if I remember right. I think you have to take this off first. So there's uh, two catches along the side for this row of buttons. Should be able to get one side off and wiggle the other. Okay, and then that'll kind of swing forward and allow you to see the ribbon connector on the bottom of the LCD. Next, uh, let's see, I'm pretty sure there's no screws holding down the screen. Okay, so I believe there's a catch or something for the actual LCD. Yep, okay, so right here, um, there's like a little indentation in the plastic midframe uh, that clips onto the LCD. So you need to get uh, a blade in there and very carefully pry it. And then the second point is here. Uh, let's see. Yep, here there's another plastic uh, clip that, that's, you know, holding the LCD. So with that, we should be able to... Yeah, there's another one right here. So it's just careful not to... Come on, this is the last one, I promise. There we go. Okay, and so then the entire display will swing forward and there are two um, ZIF connectors that hold the LCD in. So we can go and detach those. And those will slide out and here's the display itself. Let's set that aside. Um, might as well go for broke. Um, so we're gonna take off, there are two ribbon connectors. Um, let's see, there we go, fix focus. Uh, one, this guy is for the UMD laser, the optical drive um, laser head connector. And then this one right here is for the, the buttons, the front buttons. So we can remove that. And finally, or sorry, this is for the motor assembly for the optical. Uh, drive. This is the actual laser head, uh, and that's just a friction fit connector as well as if, sorry, and that just comes out right there. Uh, there's a grounding plate um, that is held on by a little piece of tape, which we can remove easily. And so here we go. Here are the insides of the uh, PSP 2000. There's a little heatsink 
material uh, between here and here. This, I believe, is the main processor, and this guy's the Wi-Fi chipset. You notice the antenna right next to it. Um, there's another ribbon connector. I remember this um, from the other, the last uh, PSP 2000 I took apart, uh, and this connects to the soft buttons uh, for the flex cable for the, you know, the face buttons here. You can remove the actual rubber mechanism there, and you can see the two speakers. Um, right in there and there. So this little mechanism here, um, I, I'm not gonna take that out. Um, that's kind of a pain to get back in, but that's what kind of does the clickiness for the actual UMD door. Um, so yeah, that's a bit of a pain to get back in if I remember right. Um, in terms of any possible water damage, I'm not seeing anything. This is actually very clean inside. Um, so I'm gonna go through and reseat like pretty much every connector and see if that will fix her and I'll be right back uh, you know either way if it works or not so I'll be right back in a second okay so I have the main board out now uh, one thing to note is I'm gonna uh, I've already measured um, the fuses usually the fuses are the first thing to go and that that might be why um, the backlight isn't coming on or if the screen isn't coming on. So I've already measured those and those seem fine. So just in case you guys want to know, um, this top fuse is for the, the backlight. Um, so this one, if you measure, if, if it measures something like uh, uh, an ohm or less, something like that, a, a pretty low resistance, that's good. Um, this other one is just in series with that. That's like a secondary fuse. Um, so both of them measure okay. Um, so it's not that the fuse is blown. I'm going to put it back together just to double check and shine a flashlight on the screen while it's on um, to see if I can see any image at all. If not, it could be that this board is gone, unfortunately. It could be a software issue, even. Uh, it could have nothing to do with the hardware. It could be someone was uh, flashing custom firmware and they messed up and they bricked it, something like that. It could be very easily something like that. Um, I can look into you know, trying to do a, like a factory reinstall or something like that uh, to get it up and running if it's not a hardware issue. Um, I really wish I have a couple other PSP units back home that I know have uh, motherboards at work and uh, screens at work. I wish I had them here so that I could switch out parts to double check. Unfortunately, I don't. So I'm going to put it back together, check with a flashlight, and then look into um, maybe if I can get into some kind of bootloader mode um, to do a software repair if that's the issue. Um, but yeah, we'll see. So I'll be back in a sec again. So yeah, um, played around with it a little bit more. Uh, tried bridging the fuse just in case. Same exact uh, phenomenon. I did measure the backlight. Uh, voltage was 5.3 some volts. Uh, I know it should be up near like 30 volts. So I don't think this is a hardware problem, actually. Um, well, it could be the backlight driver. I see something's wrong with it. But I shined a light on it while it was on. And so suspicious things I find. Um, the backlight doesn't come on. When I shine a light on it, there's nothing on the screen at all. Uh, there's no sound. So the PSP actually isn't booting up. So I believe it's actually a software problem. I believe... Um, so I'm going to check the contents of this uh, memory card that it came with. If I find custom firmware files, then I'm going to guess that the previous owner bricked it. Um, so they were doing something messing with the internal flash um, that stores the actual firmware for the device. And they somehow screwed it up and it bricked it. So uh, options what I can try. Um, I can try getting my hands on a Pandora battery and reflashing it, um, or um, just to double check everything. Um, once I, I get home and I, I can use my other PSPs, I can swap out the screen, double check that, make sure that still works. Uh, once I get that out of the way, I can try, I don't know, I might have another motherboard that works. I could try swapping out the entire motherboard. Um, that's sort of kind of brute force, though. But yeah, you can see now the light's on. I tried holding all combinations of button um, in case this was, um, you know, a custom firmware device trying to get into a uh, recovery menu, nothing. Um, so I'm going to guess uh, it's something software-related on the motherboard. I'm going to keep on this. Uh, if you guys have any anything that you think could help, 
uh, comment down below, please. Um, so I'll be posting up an update video if, if and when um, I make progress on this. So uh, until then, I will see you guys later. Bye. And addendum. So I had to break out my old XP machine because that's the only uh, memory stick reader that I have right now, actually. So, yeah, um, I opened the memory stick and this is what I find. An update folder with the eboot file, which means that the last thing that this PSP likely did was try to update. And something happened, so I'm going to guess, I'm pretty much 98% sure that the hardware is perfectly fine. Uh, it's just a botched update. So I'm gonna look into um, getting a Pandora battery and whatnot. I, I think I have a spare battery I can open up and turn into a Pandora battery. Then I need to uh, b you know, get the memory stick and all that sorted out and see if that works and I'll make an update video if it does or even if it doesn't. Uh, so yeah, I'm pretty sure I know what's going on. Darn it. Anyway, I hope it was I was hoping it was an easy fix. Just bri bridging a fuse or whatnot. Because yeah, brick units are kind of a pain. Uh yeah. Anyway, okay, I promise this is the last uh addendum to this video, so bye.